besides a great cloud of witnesses, let us throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles, and let us run with perseverance the race marked out for us. Let us fix our eyes on Jesus, the author and perfecter of our faith, who, for the joy set before him, endured the cross, scorning its shame, and sat down at the right of the throne of God. Consider him endured such opposition from sinful men, so that you will not grow weary and lose heart. In your struggle against sin, you have not yet resisted to the point of shedding your blood. And you have forgotten that the word of encouragement that addresses you as son says, My son, do not make light of the Lord's dis dis discipline, and do not lose heart when he rebukes you, because the Lord dis disciplines those he loves, and he punishes everyone he accepts as a son. And your hardship as a discipline, God is treating you as sons, for what son is not for what son is not disciplined by his father if you are not disciplined and everyone undergoes discipline then you are illegitimate til children and not true sons moreover we have all had human fathers who disciplined us and we uh, respected them for we respected them for it. how much more should we submit to the father of our spirits and leave our fathers disciplined us for a little while as they thought best but god disciplined us for good and for our good and that we may share in his holiness no discipline seems pleasant at the time but painful later on however it produces a harvest of righteousness and peace for those who have been trained by it therefore strengthen your feeble arms and weak knees make level paths for, for your feet so that the lame may not be disabled but are healed make every effort to live in peace with all men to be holy without holiness no one will see the lord see to it that no one misses the grace of god and that no bitter roots grow up to cause trouble and defile many I mean we do thank our Lord because our Lord came into this onto this earth and he was treated with one purpose he w so that we may be sec rescued us that were driven away from the Lord and his will and we were just we were in the hands of the enemy of our soul we do thank the Lord because with his sacrifice he set us free he was the one to pay with his blood upon the cross that and that his blood was shedded so that what we've done can be repaid for because we had we made sins or whatever mistakes everything was repaid for and he paid Jesus Christ paid for us our sicknesses our sins he upholded on him he hold it on his shoulders and he set us free from the arms of the enemy of us of our soul because he had us in chains and in circles. Now, today, as we read through the Word of God, we see points that will make us, from actually from the previous chapter, that is a chapter of faith, and we do see older brothers from the Old Testament in the Old Testament that believed in God and remained faithful until the end. They remained faithful in the midst of great trouble and such trouble that it would be hard from us to to say that we pass through the same issues or compare ourselves with them. Now regarding what we've been told in the previous chapter we are now being told that we are surrounded by such great cloud of witnesses that they suffered much 
yet they run the course with perseverance because God revealed to them in their life that he is alive now we in the midst of that cloud of witnesses that we read in verse 1 we are prompted by God to to walk on the road that he assigned it to us when we were baptized and reborn now he's prompting us to l leave every weight that we have on our shoulders down that may be anything I'm not referring absolutely to sin it could be um, just thoughts of this world or problems that you encounter in your everyday life including your job things that you you didn't you didn't take yourself up to your shoulders but were thrown onto you and God is telling us today to just disregard them so that we may run with perseverance and we have to and we have to throw off everything that hinders the sin that so easily entangle us now those sins do seem small but they are many and it's easy for them to to entangle us so that we are hindered to walk the way that God wants to walk in other words to for us to not walk by the footprints of God because of them now we are prompted to watch out for those sins as well or the uh, the thoughts that you have in your head and if you do have thoughts in your head today go to your praying corner and ask God to get it away from you so that you may walk freely in the work in in the road that God and the path that God declared that you should walk on now all of our life is a struggle throughout our life we are in struggle it is very sometimes our lives are hard and we do say sometimes that we have a massive amount of burden on us however God allows that burden to come onto our lives for all of us and we do go through struggle indeed sometimes those struggles come from different means or people but we are prompt or we, we actually prompt to hold them up ourselves now this is a kind of struggle that Paul describes as a good fight if we go through the afflictions of Paul we probably gonna understand that we are not able to reach that point without losing our faith someone might say you don't understand dear brother what I'm going through and that's true I, I don't but God knows and we do have to be patient we do have to have patient patience because patience is what we need in order for us to go through the struggle and end up in the kingdom of he heavens but we do thank God because we're not only looking for or counting on our own power to do what we can do but for us there's God and he is our leader we do have a king and we do have a leader and he is leading us and he is managing us we have someone that has a purpose and his purpose is to get us and help us reach eternal life and the heavens it's something that is miraculous amazing and not feasible for a human person a carnal person but we do thank God for his spirit now 
God will get, is getting so much joy out of it for from us get being saved and he was so joyful to see us being saved that he sent his only son to set us free and once he was sacrificed he was sat down at the right hand of the throne of God as we read in verse 2 now because of that we have someone who's in between us and God now we do have a struggle therefore and we have to go through it and God has to see and he also knows but actually it's for us to see and the devil to see that we are children of God and we struggle and we hope and we want to end up in the kingdom of heavens so that God may be able to work in our lives the work that he's that he wants us to that he wants us to work now in our life we're not supposed to only have joyful moments but also despair and sadness and through those we're gonna end the kingdom of heaven indeed now the road is narrow but the ends of it is the kingdom of heaven now in the midst of a difficult hour when we are brought in the midst of troubles and we have a question in our mind should I walk down this path the narrow one or the wide one that will eventually lead me down to eternal damnation now we have that kind of knowledge because of the Spirit of God and we do thank God for that now we know that we were put on the right road and there's no way around it we're not supposed to look for something better we know that we are down the right path and the best part for us and we have with us God that is a savior and Lord and leader and he's walking before us so that he may rectify and help us through the way now the Word of God prompts us to consider that him who endured such opposition for us for sinful men that's us and what Jesus Christ went through when he was down on this earth was because not because he was a sin sinful man but because he did all of that for us so that we may not lose our faith and grow weary and lose heart as it says in verse 3 now if it's written in the Word of God it is true indeed because it said it says and you have forgotten says in your struggle against sin you have not yet resisted to the point of shedding your blood and Jesus Christ did that when he was down on this earth and you have forgotten the word of encouragement that addresses you as sons and we read from verse 5 my son do not make light of the Lord's discipline and do not lose heart when he rebukes you because the Lord disciplines those he loves and he punishes everyone he accepts as a son now that is something that we do thank God for because it was his grace that the Word of God was revealed to us and now we are joyful enough to be in the midst of all this blessing and now all of this was done for us to have the option to choose so that we may choose what's what w it's best for us and the Word of God here says that you should not for God forget the word of encouragement that addresses your sons now in the midst of our road through our road God is revealing to us that you may not walk
properly at this point and what you're doing is not the proper thing to do here my child do not do not lose heart because he's rebuking you being patient is what will lead you to glory even if I humble myself even though if I think that I that I'm right to do what I'm doing and what I'm going through is unjust if I do humble myself the result will be great because Lord, the Lord will give to you grace because of that and we do want to find grace in our lives because of our actions because without the grace of our Lord we're not able to live in this earth therefore we have to endure hardship as, as discipline because God is treating you as, as sons and because he bought us with the blood of Jesus Christ he is now allowing you hardships in our lives so that we may be disciplined and we may become powerful people of, of faith so that we may have a, a kind of walk that is by faith if you are not disciplined though as we read in verse 8 then we're not sons we may think we are but we are not truly sons of God because we are not we are actually losing heart when he's rebuking us and we do have to go through and endure the discipline if we don't then we're not true sons because we do know very well that our fathers disciplined us for a little while as they thought best in verse 10 and we didn't lose heart and we humbled ourselves everyone who was a kid everyone can remember his dad or his mom disciplining him and me as a father do remember that I was disciplined disciplining my kids whatever was necessary as I thought best so that they may become the people that we th we thought back then that would be best for the society we were born in and in specific we want we used to say that we want we wanted them to become good people now our kids didn't lose heart and they endured even more so the uh, the f the father of every flesh and every man who we know that is God and he loved us so much that he gave to us his first born his only born son he knows best better than us so therefore his discipline should be even better than our fathers but God as we read further down disciplines us for our good so that we may share in his holiness our purpose is to reach that point of holiness so that we may end up in the kingdom of heaven because it will be dreadful if you stay if you are left behind because nothing that is not holy will enter of course every kind of discipline and hardship it's not pleasant but painful as we read in verse 11 he has affliction and he has sadness and sorrow however later on it produces a harvest of righteousness and peace for those who have been trained by it therefore to the people and if we can recall or remember the people that are going through the professional the professional athletes they go through exhausting training so that they might be able to achieve their goal and get the reward now we as people in this life we are struggling to make our future better and even produce a better fu future for our kids and that's without result as we see however 
now we're talking about a different harvest of righteousness and peace and a different reward and it's way different than what we're struggling for in our human life personally all my life I endure hardship so that I may be able to make my life better and this life is not enough and now it's coming to an end for us uh, elder people how much more how much better is it for me to struggle for eternal life that God is providing to me through Jesus Christ we do thank God that is why therefore strengthen your feeble arms and weak knees sometimes we grow weary and we are leaving it all behind but God is, is prompting us to strengthen ourselves because if we become weary is what our enemy wants and in the Word of God we read that my enemy do not be joyful because even if I fall I will stand up and that's the kind of Christian that we're talking about we have the Lord and we have his blood that will wash us clean from every sin if you have fallen if you failed stand up and start your struggle again and start running your course because the purpose of the enemy is to hit us specifically in the faith these latter days so that the person might lose heart and the word of God is saying do not grow weary but strengthen your feeble arms lift them up so that you may exalt your God the weak knees set them up and start running again make level paths for your feet as we read in verse 13 so that the lame may not be disabled but rather healed we do have our Lord Jesus Christ who is sitting in the right hand of the throne of God for us and for our mistakes and for our sins and what he's calling us to do is to not grow weary and lose faith and if you fall you should lift yourself up and God wants you to do that and the Lord is ready to do to, to, to wash you clean and make you holy again so that you may run your course once more make every effort to live in peace with all men and to be holy without holiness and no one will see the Lord as we read in verse 14 that's a very important verse that sometimes is bringing us to to great struggle because we're not able to do that easily how is it possible for me to be that holy for me to enter and see the Lord for the, the Word of God to say it means it can be done because the Word of God is saying it it means that God can make it happen for you and we do thank God because we have that kind of hope the Word of God is giving us and he's helping us to understand the level of holiness we are at the moment and when we see it then w whatever we have to do will be what we listening those days and especially on Monday and it would be for us to ask from the Lord what we see it's impossible for us to do if we go through if we go to first to Corinthians first to the first letter to the Corinthians God wants us to live in reality not in fantasies and fairy tales and not living in and to not live in a way
that we think that we are either too bad and we're going to lose heart or we are too good and we're going to end in the kingdom of heaven without any problems. What is actually holiness? Now the word of God says that he called us before the world was created so that he may wash us clean so that he may show us to God and that's Jesus Christ and in Corinthians first to the known part of first Corinthians that is the hymn of love I'm going to read from verse 4 we can understand from those four verses we can understand how to live our lives and we can understand where we're standing depending and in regards to our holiness now love is patient now as I see that I'm not able to say that I am patient then I'm missing love and I'm, I'm, we are in those verses we're reading for are in chapter 13 1st Corinthians and v verse 4 now I'm able to understand from just a glance the, the level of my holiness from those verses love is kind in other words in other words, in me, when I truly love God, when I truly love Christ, there's no way for me to do anything else but the Word of God. It does not envy. There's no jealousy. And the heart is not asking, love is not asking after it is looking to your neighbor and becoming jealous of what they have. If that happens to you, you have to run to God and ask for the blood of Christ to cleanse you free. Because we want to become holy. And it is asked from us by God because without it we're not going to see the face of God it does not boast in other words boasting it's close to disregarding someone I, I pay no attention to anyone I talk the way I want to talk I allow my mouth to utter words that might hurt someone and I don't really care about it or offend someone that is boasting I don't really care who is standing before me I don't care if I'm in front of an elder and I speak in a ba with a bad manner with a bad attitude and every I'm not specifically talking about the elders but I'm talking about everyone because all of our brothers are important then we go through it says it does it's not proud it's important for us to control a heart so what comes in because there will be a proud boasting and proud spirit coming in trying to intrude because when things are revealed to you even by God it is you are in danger of becoming proud and we've seen people that God blessed them and they became proud and the God the their heart boasted what happens then then the person loses the grace of God and then he's destroyed if he is not if he does not repent and we do thank the Word of God because He is teaching us that there's cure for everything and that's repentance for us because once we understand 
and when my heart comes up or the devil comes up to me and makes my heart boasted I have the Spirit of God so the Spirit of God will give me the signal that there's a mistake or a problem here and I'm not disregarding it but I'm running back to the Lord asking for re for repent repenting and asking for his grace to wash me clean and this boasting of heart will be a problem for you if you let it slide by and if you do not do anything about it then you won't be able to rectify it later you'll be walking with a proud spirit and you will never understand that there's a problem there after that it says it is not rude and we're talking about a good manner it is not self-seeking it's not about me but also what my brothers need as the word of God says it is not easily angered you you are not easily angered with your brothers this is what we also heard in on Monday it's they are very important and that is why we're listening to those things again I believe we are not supposed to be angered and when you see yourself be being angry and I do see myself going down that path unfortunately I understand and I see that I'm losing the presence of God and there is not God there I understand what is going on and what I'm supposed to do then I'm supposed to repent and humble myself immediately ask ask for the pardon of the person that I offended that is the cure it will happen to you because you're a person you have yet a heart that you have to restrain if you see yourself being angered therefore there is need for repentance and for there is need for me to ask for God to give me more love it keeps no record of wrongs there's no such thing as a record of wrongs in your heart everything is forgotten and when a thought is coming up in your mind be aware and ask for the blood of Christ and throw that thought away say to God please throw that thought away from from me sometimes we do hear thoughts from others but sometimes they do come from within the heart love does not delight in evil it's not possible for you to love and then delight in evil of some when someone else is going th what someone else is going through but rejoices with the truth and that is especially what God wants he wants us to rejoice with and seek the truth it always protects always protecting always believing and we're not f we're not in foolishness but we do believe and we are not disregarding we're not thinking that our brother is lying there may be a mistake but we we have to be protectful always trust always hopes always perseveres and we have to love everyone and our, even our neighbors those things are not easy to be done but it is the holiness as a God is prompting us to walk by so if we go through those verses of what actually love is we're gonna see that if we could live that way we would be called holy indeed therefore what are we supposed to do we have to ask what we asked from God and he went into my heart personally because I know how in depth I am and I know that we are the same because we are people therefore we need to ask God to fill our hearts with love and the love is not only for us to love our neighbors truly 
because even that we're not even able to do properly but the proper love is for us to love God and love Christ and when your heart is filled up with this kind of love that means that everyone anyone who loves me will keep my commandments and I know that I'm not able to keep my commandments I'm asking from God to give me this kind of love his love that is the fruit of the fruit of Holy Spirit and as it comes in my heart the true love that is when God comes in our lives and he's giving us the Holy Spirit and he's giving you love and we do remember that in the day of our rebirth I do remember that day that and faithfulness of course and joyfulness of course but I do remember especially about love that people that gave me harm I was able to love now that I know the Word of God better and I've, re I've went through those things many times how much more should I ask for this love to come into my heart through the Holy Spirit because as he gave us this kind of love with the fruit of the Holy Spirit this love has to be upgraded and reach that level and how is that gonna be that is gonna be because we are asking for it and we are asking for God and our Lord to bring us to the level of his love the love that made him send his only son to be crucified for me and we are talking about this love and we have to regard and understand that this is the love that we need to reach and in our everyday I'm going to be fully filled with filled up with the Holy Spirit because if I have everything else above that because if we if we go above uh, just above what love is there are certain points that will show us that we might think we are in the right path but actually we're not because sometimes we think that we are something because we gave something out of um, our things a, a thing that I was owning and it say, the word of God says that even if you give your body to be burned up and that's important that's not something to be taken lightly you're nothing without love therefore you have to understand that you have to work for this love not for you to just do good works and good will not for me to just love my brother and sister because it's it's a fact that if I love God there's no way for me to not love my brother but our struggle has to be to love God because the Word of God says that if we do so as we go through and read that even if I give all I possess to the poor and surrender my body to the flames but have not love I gain nothing and I think that I have love because I gave all of the above and I'm just but I'm not so therefore I have to love God how am I supposed to do that the Word of God says that being humble is better than sacrifice itself and obeying is better than the calves that are about to be slaughtered for sacrifice now that means that being obedient to the Word of God and to what God is writing in his word proves that I love him this love therefore now I have to work on so that I'm able to upgrade it in me and God can come in my life and this is what God actually wants because God wants us all to reach the kingdom of heaven and see his face I want you to just go through a few verses as well uh, back in Hebrews 15 
back where we reading from Hebrews and verse 15 says see to it that no one misses the grace of God and no bitter root grows up to cause trouble and defile many and we are especially talking about a pastor the deacons or the elders they have to they're obliged to not to be to always be aware there's no way we have we can allow bitterness in someone's heart because we have to look up of course we have to be patient and we are going to be patient with our be patience patient with our brothers but we have to look out for bitterness roots because if it grows up thinking that we may be need, we may need to be patient and not bring my bro our brother in a bad position this will grow and it will defile many because what he, what bitterness is is going to grow and it will, because we are one church we are a closed environment slowly but steady people will hear these bitterness words coming out of this person's mouth they will be defiled S and so that way see so, so that no one is missing the Prince of God as well therefore because of those verses we have to be aware and in alert when something's coming up or a bitterness root for one of our brothers we have to automatically go back to God and ask from God to cleanse us free we are gonna not only are we gonna lose uh, the eternal heavens but we also gonna defile the church if we don't do that and it, it will get to from bad to worse and may God help us so that we may love him and then not only we're gonna have peace in our hearts but we also gonna have all of those that come after the peace we're gonna have tranquility and we're gonna have love I mean